Hello and welcome to another episode of Despite the Challenges, a show where we showcase people with amazing abilities who, despite their impediments and challenges, not only turn their own lives around, but they go out in the community and help others in so many amazing ways. Today, on my show, I have a young lady, Cindy. Cindy is such a smart, young, vibrant lady. She isn't afraid to take risks. She was born with a disformity, which has not been diagnosed by the doctors. However, they were able to treat her. That didn't stop her a bit. She has not only made tremendous achievements for herself, but she is an inventor and an amazing, amazing person. And let's hear more directly from Cindy. Hi. Cindy, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. It's very nice to be here. Great, mm -hmm. great. So uh, tell us about Cindy. Well, um, so I was born with a physical disability. Um, I was born with a left hand and I'm one-handed. Mm -hmm. And um, like you mentioned before, the doctors, they never really they didn't really know how to describe me or diagnose me since they've never seen anything quite like me. Mm -hmm. But you know, I had learned to adapt with, uh, to my handicap and I've done pretty well um, academically. You know, I've scored very high test scores and you know, I just do my best. And I love challenging myself and trying new things. I could see that. Yeah. So let's go back to your childhood. So okay. I'm sure it, your parents must have tried everything they possibly could to find what's wrong, how they could help, or even doctors may have looked at how they could help and there was no diagnosis. Exactly. All right, so what kind of challenges that you are told your parents had to face in order to, to keep you motivated and keep you doing what you needed to do as a child and be just live a normal life? Well, um, you know, my mom would help me, you know, dress myself. She'd teach me how to do different things. Um, but I learned as, as we went along. Mm -hmm. um, my, the most difficult part was learning how to tie my shoelaces, which <laughs> took, took a lot well, longer than most yeah, people. Yeah, you could, you could yeah. help mom or <laughs> sibling help you. Yes, yeah, so my, my brother yeah. used to help me a lot. <laughs> um, right. yeah. So that's kind of a little bit yeah. bonding as well. It was, it was <laughs> extremely bonding. My brother and I, we had never been so close uh -huh. until that point. So how was school for you? Um, school was uh, challenging for me um, because, you know, there was really no one like me. Um, mm -hmm. But I, I learned how to, you know, write. I can write very well. And you um, use your left hand. Yeah, I, I use my left hand entirely mm -hmm. for everything. Mm -hmm. So, but everything is right-handed. So I had to learn how to be a right-handed, left-handed person, which is very interesting. But uh, Oh, <laughs> interesting. <laughs> I, I hear you. <laughs> it, was, it was tough, but, you know, yeah. I, I did it. I learned how to mm -hmm. adjust and cope. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That takes a lot of strength, a whole lot of inner strength uh, to be in a room full of children and feeling different. Even a, a normal child uh, to connect with other peers and a group of children is a tough thing. And for you to be able to keep yourself moving and doing well at school that's that takes a whole a lot of strength and inspiration so besides your parents who was who was other source of inspiration for you uh, my teachers were actually uh, they mm -hmm. were very helpful they always wanted to learn you know how I learned <laughs> so we were always learning together wow. um, so it was very interesting I had some really great teachers they were always open and you know uh -huh. helpful with me and I also had some really great friends too growing up so they mm -hmm. were always carrying things for me if I couldn't carry things but I, I like to do it myself but they were like no I'll help you Cindy <laughs> so they were very helpful. Um, are there any stories from childhood that stand out? 
and that you fondly remember? Yeah, um, so when I was in fifth grade, I actually was in the music program, uh -huh. and I was learning how to play the French horn. And it's a very, you know, hard instrument to play, and it's also very, you know, heavy. Oh, yeah. well. <laughs> <laughs> so um, my friends, I couldn't carry it. So mm -hmm. I used to have my friend, she lived right next door to me. She would carry the instrument for me the mm -hmm. entire year. So we'd go to band wow. practice. She'd carry my instrument with hers. And I, I know it's fun. And so she <laughs> she's like, you better be a French hornist after this because I've been carrying this the whole year. <laughs> so okay. So that was kind of payoff. Yeah, it was, uh -huh. it was a good payoff. Good, 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 good. Um, so any subjects you were more drawn to? Um, I really liked sciences. I've mm -hmm. always been, because uh, I've always had to do things a certain way, mm -hmm. my own way. I guess I, I sort of aspired to do science, you know, experiments mm -hmm. and trial and error, because that's how I learned how to cope with my disability. And I guess that's what made me, but I also learned, because I actually am very artistic, so uh, I can draw very well. So art was also another inspiration, so I kind mm -hmm. of mixed uh, science and arts. So amazing. Do you have uh, some pictures to share with us? Uh, unfortunately, not with, with my artistic abilities, but um, I will actually at some point. Okay. If I get another All right. Yeah. Okay. Um, what inspired you more between art and science? Uh, the, the both are both are amazing to learn wherever your mind takes you. Science has its own benefits and art has more uh, different uh, benefits. Uh, benefits, I say, because it's how people view it. Exactly. You know, uh, art can be very healing, art can be very expressive, yeah. art can be beauty, you know. So where do you see yourself enjoying more? Um, I actually think I'm more in the artistic now mm -hmm. as I've gotten older. Um, when I was a kid, I really enjoyed sciences, and um, I really loved doing experiments and learning how the world works. But mm. now that I understand how the world works, you know, I'm like, how can I be a creative force in the world? So that's what I really love. All right. Into. So tell me, tell me. Mm -hmm. So take it away. Oh, the, the challenges that you have, what you came up with, those different ideas and things that you have done. Um, so, well, currently, um, I don't have any pictures to share <laughs> either, but I have been working on a new uh, idea that I'm sort of in the process of developing. Um, it's a new product that it's designed to accommodate different types of students. Okay. Um, some are left-handed, like myself, okay. and some are right-handed, well, actually most students are right-handed, and some are actually have physical disabilities as well. Mm -hmm. So there aren't that many products that can accommodate a whole bunch of different types of students and I sort of aspired to create that product. Okay, so wow, that's wow, that's amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. So it's the single product, mm -hmm. what I gather, a single product that would be uh, utilized by the left hand, or people with the active left hand or right hand or any kind of uh, amputation or disability exactly. they may have to use either of their hand. Exactly. Wow. Wow, that's very inspirational. Um, how did this come about? Well, from <laughs> my own experiences, um, in schools, uh, I think I mentioned earlier mm -hmm. that I had a lot of troubles adjusting to desks, you know, mm -hmm. because using right-handed desks, I'm left-handed. And a lot of left-handed students out there would probably be like, yeah, you know, I went through the same thing. You know, it's very hard mm -hmm. to learn mm -hmm. how to write left-handed, you know, using a right-handed desk. And so that sort of drew from that experience. And I was like, you know, everyone should have a decent desk to use or anyone should be able to be able to be accustomed to, you know, whatever uh, amputation that limits them. You know, they should be able to, you know, have something that accommodates them and so they can be, you know, really comfortable and they can write comfortably uh -huh. and they can do well. So that's where wow. my inspiration came from. So I, I am tempted to ask you this. You already went through school, so you're not no longer in a school right now. Yeah. So you really don't have to depend on a school desk, either it's left side or right side. Once you have gone through all these difficulties <laughs> and you still decided to help others. Exactly. Um, for me, it's more of what can I, what have I learned that can possibly help others? So for me, I've <laughs> learned a lot from having to mm -hmm. deal with a 
a lot of different situations and I figure, you know, like, no one really has to go through what I went through. You know, I wouldn't want anyone to go through exactly what mm -hmm. I went through when I could easily solve their problems because I've done it. So I say, why not wow. try to fix it once wow. and for all? Okay, so um, what was, uh, what was uh, most, most important to you um, growing up uh, to, to help yourself learn new things and be able to provide uh, something for others like you have done there has to be some inner inspiration. There has to be some sort of motivation. A lot of time people share their story and say that because I had this hurdle, I had this barrier, and I want to do something about it. And that a lot of good things come out of that. So tell us something beyond that, that it kept you moving with Oh, the barriers are not always physical. There are a lot of emotional. There are a lot of things uh, uh, people have to face um, because of whatever challenge that they have. Either it could be, you know, easily people could say, I don't, if I, I wish, if I had the money to do it, I will do X, Y, Z. There must be something else besides your own challenge of that. I can help others uh, because I have learned the ways to how I can. What comes to mind? It's a really good question. Um, so I would say that my most prime, I guess, motivation um, would be that you know, I'm a true perfectionist at heart. I, I really, <laughs> I really am a true perfectionist at heart. And um, I always give it my all, whatever I do. So for me, it's more of like, if I solve a problem, I always feel like, how can I solve it better? And, you know, I even challenge okay. my own thinking. And mm -hmm. so in that, in that way, you know, I end up making something that can accommodate different types of people. And that's how it started. You know, I started with my own disability mm -hmm. and then it somehow I'm like, how can I make this better? And you know, it's turned out to help just about anybody. Yeah. So that's how it grew. And mm -hmm. um, with regards to emotional barriers, um, with regards to my perfectionism, I, <laughs> I've sort of learned not to take myself too seriously because I figure, you know, it's, Failure is part of life. That's how you learn. So for me, it's kind of like you have to fail in order to learn, you know, yes. how to do things better or more efficiently. So for me, it's, I've actually become very comfortable with making mistakes because I'm like, okay, now I understand. Making mistakes and learning from mistakes. Exactly. These are, I think these are uh, at the foundation of every success story. You know, you make mistakes, you learn from them, and not repeat them. Exactly. Anything that you would like to share with our viewers that something uh, that you failed at and you learned from that failure? Um, yeah. So, that's actually, um, I'll go back to my school years, actually, when I was in college. Sure. Uh, I think I was taking a logic course. Mm -hmm. I, I had always wanted to be a lawyer ever since I was four. <laughs> uh, oh, so come on. <laughs> you were in science. You loved <laughs> art and you wanted to be a lawyer? <laughs> that's, yeah, that's, that's how I wanted I, I was just... just <laughs> and um, so I had to take a logic course cause, you okay. know, to prepare for my LSATs. And logic, actually, I thought I was a very logical person until I took the logic course. And I was like, wow, I, I make really bad arguments, you know. And so from someone who really, like, does well academically and having to struggle for, for that course, mm -hmm. you know, it was very interesting uh, and also very, like, moving. I was like, wow, you know, actually, I'm struggling with logic. Um, but I actually did take the time to learn it. And, mm -hmm. you know, from actually making a lot of mistakes, I sort of, got better at logic to the point where I actually was one of the top students. You know, my philosophy professor wow. was like, wow, you're really good at this. I'm like, yeah. 
And, <laughs> and I laughed because I was like, yeah, I'm good. No, I'm not really. And, and you didn't want to become a lawyer afterwards. No, so. no. <laughs> no, no. So you, you went back to being mm -hmm. yourself. I went back to being myself, yes. Okay. So what, what did were uh, your majors in college? What would you? Oh, I, I studied political science. So okay. that was my major in college. Okay. Yeah. So you moved from science and art to a different direction. <laughs> All right. So mm, tell me, what do you do uh, besides inventing things and besides doing uh, others? So what else mm -hmm. is in Cindy's? Cindy's day. <laughs> well, you know, I, you know, I work part time um, at mm -hmm. a company, mm -hmm. you know, I take care of all the, um, uh, sorry, the, um, all the filing and all the computer okay. stuff, because I'm actually pretty good with computers. Mm -hmm. And all the other offices call me whenever they're having troubles with their computers. I go and help them as well. So um, you're in our tech support? No, I'm not. Actually, okay. I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I just know enough that I can solve some problems. OK. Um, yeah, so I do that. And mm -hmm. you know, when I'm free, I usually just write. I like writing different things, different stories, whatever pops into my head. Mm -hmm. Or sometimes I get a great idea from someone and I'm like, hey, that's a really, and I like to research m about it. I really love learning. So for me, it's always mm -hmm. like a process of discovering and learning and seeing, you know, what else can I do? So that's what I like, really enjoy. Good, good, good. Mm -hmm. um, you drive. Yes. <laughs> I can tell by your smile. You you you're such an vibrant person that you okay. So did you did you had any uh, situations where when you go for driving lessons and things like people give you a kind of look that are you sure? <laughs> yes, actually. Nine. Um, when I my mom took me to uh, get my learner's permit, I went to the driving school. Mm -hmm. And the driving instructor was like, okay, you know, my mom's like, yeah, my daughter's really interested. I was standing right next to her. And he's like, okay, so where is she? And he's like, she's right here. <laughs> and, uh, and I was like, hi, I'm, uh -huh. it's me. And, uh, it's, and he looked at me and he's like, and then he's like, uh, are you able to steer? I'm like, I, I'm like, I'm not sure, but we'll find out when we get in the car. Mm -hmm. So he actually gave me the keys. We went to the car and I started the ignition. Um, I leaned over because I'm left-handed, mm -hmm. and I started the ignition, and he was like, you know, I think you can do it. I was like, yeah, I've been telling people for years. <laughs> so that was Oh, fun. wow. So um, uh, do you have any kind of a special uh, attachments or anything to, to be able to steer? Yeah, um, I have a rotating knob. You sort of stick to the steering wheel, and that enables me to turn. Okay. But I don't have any other um, stuff. Everything else is mm -hmm. normal. What else? Mm -hmm. uh, well, you know, I, I love challenging myself, so um, I, I do different things all the time. I try to be as normal as I can, you know. Sometimes I scare people with how normal I can be. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, like I, I tried rollerblading. I fell a lot, but, you know, it was, it was a learning experience, but I learned how to do it, too. And, and now you do it. <laughs> I don't do it as often as I used to, but mm -hmm. yeah. And ice skating, that was, that was a painful one because ice is a lot harder than concrete, but uh -huh. it's fun. Um, I see that you also uh, are taking flying lessons. Uh, I did one flying lesson, actually. I see. Um, I'm deathly afraid of heights. So this was a part of to challenge yourself? Yes, it was. Um, I've flown in planes before. I mean, you know, when you're mm -hmm. a passenger, it's very easy. Um, but I had the opportunity to go to mm -hmm. Princeton Airport for, they did like an hour flight lesson. Okay. And so the instructor was like, yeah, I'll take you up there. And I was like, okay. So, and he actually let me fly, which is really uh, wow. cool. And terrifying at the time. It was also Okay, terrifying. so so you were not in the uh, pilot seat. No, I was. Um, you were. Yeah, there were two seats, and um, he there was two s steering. I'm not sure what they call them. Okay, co-pilot. Yeah. I was so like, you were co-pilot. <laughs> yes, and he actually handed me the controls and oh, wow. let me fly for mm -hmm. 30 minutes, which was amazing. Mm -hmm. um, yes, and I actually forgot about my fear for a while, and he's like, "See, you're not afraid." I was like, "No, I'm not." And no, then I looked yeah, down. No, no. So it's fun. <laughs> it's it's amazing. It's so amazing to even hear directly from a person to tell their story once they overcome something. And I cannot begin to tell you a lot of time that you have people who have everything 
in their lives to be grateful, to be thankful, be provided, and they find so many things that sabotage, this sabotage themselves, right? I am so inspired to bring people like Cindy that who not only has changed, challenged herself, changed her life, has such a beautiful smile on her face, going helping people, inventing products, making a difference in other people's life. And I know that somehow I have that sense that it's not, this is not the end, the product that you have, you're working on, that's not the end, there's more coming. Yeah. So what do you, what do you plan in future? What it would be a writing project or? Um, in the future, I think I would like to help perhaps even develop more products that mm -hmm. are a little bit more complex and maybe even help save the planet. You know, mm -hmm. I'm a true environmentalist at heart. And okay. I was like, you know, people should enjoy, you know, the sunshine, you know, and get to see all these animals. You know, you don't want to, you know, I'd like my great, great grandchildren to see, you know, giraffes and say, wow, look, my great grandma <laughs> saw this too. So for me, that's what I'd like to do too, you mm -hmm. know, to keep, you know, the earth going as long as it can be. And also to, you know, they always talk about, you know, renewed energy sources and yes. stuff. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to be able to do that. But then also, I'd also like to help people with disabilities as well. Um, I don't, I'm not sure in what area because we tend to be very independent, but um, yeah. I'd like to be able to try and help at least some or maybe help coach some, I guess, mm -hmm. to find have something. You, have you tried contacting any organization or any agency or have you worked with any um, nonprofit uh, helping children with some challenges or any kind of disabilities? Uh, not yet. I haven't mm -hmm. had the chance because I've been working so much on this project and doing other a lot of other stuff. Mm -hmm. But um, when I get a chance to, I would love the opportunity to work with different people with disabilities and talk to them and see. I don't know. Maybe I can even help them invent something too. I you know, so and get their creative juices flowing too. Because mm -hmm. I'm sure they can do it just like I can. So. Well, I'm sure that they do. There are so many amazing people out there. Uh, we just have to bring their stories out, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right? Yes. So let the world know that your impediments are just in your mind more than they exist in reality, right? So what else? What else is on Cindy's plate? Um, I guess whatever is, I'm a very open book. Uh, I sort of embrace whatever comes to me. And if it's something that I truly can't do, then I'll be mm -hmm. like, you know, I, I rarely say no, but <laughs> I, I, you know, I try to do as much as I can. But you know, there are times when I probably will say no to a project or mm -hmm. something that I really want to do. But um, as far as the future goes, I'm open to whatever comes. You know, I love challenging myself. I love learning. I love meeting different people mm -hmm. and hearing their stories. And I don't know, maybe working with them. So, for me so you keep you keep your siblings, your parents on their toes too. I'm sorry. Your siblings. Mm -hmm. Uh, you uh, keep the, everybody on their toes because <laughs> you're always coming up with these things and uh, uh, I'm sure that they're inspired. Oh yeah, well I come from a family of high achievers too, so I have actually bigger shoes to fill. Than, oh know. wow. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so okay. uh, yeah, I'm actually trying to catch up to them, you know, they're like, ah, okay. you know, I see. Yeah, so. but it's, it's fun, you know, they, they always you know, they're always mm -hmm. like cheering me on. They're like, yeah, do it, go for it, you know. And I'm like, but I haven't told you what I'm doing yet. They're like, yeah, you, you'll do it, you'll figure it out. So, um, yeah, and they, they are also high achievers, so. So you have a very encouraging environment. Yeah, I That's do. That's great. Have. That's such a privilege to have. Yeah, it's a very rare privilege. Yes. Yes. It's, it's a rare privilege, yes. <laughs> to have that kind of environment, to support you, to encourage you, and you encourage yourself, this is an, such an, a great combination. <laughs> <laughs> it is a great combination. Yes. Yeah. So um, how soon do you think this uh, product that you're working at would be out in the market or the prototypes would come out there? Have you been testing uh, that in a... 
Um, currently, I've been sort of talking to a lot of school administrators about it and, mm -hmm. you know, sort of saying, okay, this is, you know, what I, the issues that I had, mm -hmm. you know, this is what I designed it to do, mm -hmm. and, you know, and it has so much more, you know, possibilities that I, I, I don't think I'll be able to tap oh. into. Mm -hmm. um, but in, in terms of, you know, you have to find the right people to help bring it out. So, you know, that's where I am sort of in the process of finding the right manufacturers or yes. sourcers. So it's, it's a big project oh, it's to, a, uh, to take it out as a product out as a business. So you have to learn a lot of different skills. Exactly. What are the things that you're finding out uh, are still a big obstacle for you as an entrepreneur? Um, well, manufacturing, because I've never really, mm -hmm. <laughs> I've never really brought anything to the market mm -hmm. before. So that's a whole different ball game. Um, there's so many different components to it that I, mm -hmm. I was like, oh wow, really? And um, there's also, you know, um, uh, marketing too is also another component. Yes. That, um, but I'm actually a very creative person, so I really enjoy that component. Mm -hmm. But um, the manufacturing is definitely something that is completely yeah. out of my scope. Mm -hmm. Um, but I don't know, I'm so always looking for, to people or asking questions to sort of learn as much as I can about the process. People are always like, you, you've never done this before? I'm like, no. <laughs> so. I'm sure that you'll find the, the light manufacturers and uh, marketers as much as enthusiasm and passion that you have and uh, having a product that's going to resolve the need for many people out there. Uh, I'm sure it's just a matter of time, yeah, right? That'd be great. Yes. yes. Is there anything if any of our uh, viewers be able to help you, uh, either um, it could be manufacturing, marketing, or anything else that might be a challenge for you that you would like them to contact? Would you like to tell the viewers what you will be looking for? Uh, yeah, so I'm always looking for mentors who, uh, especially with this product, you know, um, definitely understanding the whole manufacturing process, but then also the school environment. Um, like I always reach out to different groups to sort of see, you know, like how, you know, especially people with disabilities, you know, I'd really like to talk to them mm -hmm. and say, you know, how can I help accommodate those individuals as well? So um, I'd love to partner with many different types of people with different backgrounds mm -hmm. actually because I feel like I can get a whole you know spectrum of knowledge in mm -hmm. that area. Uh, if someone's watching out there and if they would like to contact you is there a website or can you share your contact information? Uh, yeah I can share my emails. So okay all right so we can out. have that uh, shared mm -hmm. uh, on the show so that's very good and I'm hope I'm hoping that definitely somebody out there would see this bright young lady Cindy I want to come and help you give me the demo <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that you will hear um, from a few people who have watched the show and is there anything else that you would like to tell our viewers? Um, I guess my whole point is just, you know, try different things, learn as much as you can, have fun, you know, life is short, and, you know, try to help as many people as you can, I guess, you know, and I, I guess, you know, challenge yourself, you know, because you never know what you have in store until you try something. Until you try. Exactly. Yes. You have done it? Yeah. <laughs> many I've times? I've tried. <laughs> you tried. Yes. You tried, and you have been successful yeah. in that. Cindy? I really enjoyed talking to you and I wish you a lot of luck and I hope that you will get the right manufacturer or a marketing or any kind of advertiser or anything that uh, um, helps support your cause and product to take it out there. Um, and I wish you a lot of luck and I thank you so much for being here today. Uh, I can't wait to have your product launch and then we bring you back for our show next time. Yeah, I'd love to come back and show everyone All right. okay. what it is. Thank you so much for having me. It's been really great talking to you too. <laughs> Same here. Yeah, I can't wait to see this product uh, being out in the uh, market and people using it. Yeah, and uh, you can come and uh, share your success story again with us. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, I would love to have people. As long as it helps people, I think that's the biggest point for me. Good, good, mm -hmm. good. So for our viewers, uh, this was another episode of Despite the Challenges. I hope that uh, Cindy inspired you as much as she did. 
inspire me. And until next time, I am host Ritu Chopra. You are watching Despite the Challenges. Thank you.